welcome to the first in maybe a series. They're going to be called Paul Burgess Basics. This one is Paul Burgess Basics 1 dash pub storage. And I'm going to explain some misconceptions about pub storage. Now, all pub storage is, is taking a mass of water and pumping it up to a height and holding it there. So you've got the, what we call the potential energy of that. And when you need the electricity, you release some of it down through turbines and bang, you've got your energy. Now, in the case of Genorwick, I was the water resource engineer for that one in North Wales. And in that case, um, it's 9.1 gigawatt hours you've got stored. And so you could run at 9.1 gigawatt for an hour. Um, or by natural fact, you can't do that because it's limited to 1.7. So the speed, the maximum speed out is 1.7. The storage is 9. So you, you know, you've roughly got five and a bit hours at 1.7 or a lot less. Its job, its job is simply to take care of little peaks. When you've got a, a big event on and you get a tea break with everyone's watching it, everyone goes to the tea break, puts the kettle on, closes the peak. The Norway can be fired up in a two, three, four seconds and you're supplying power for that. That's its role. That is very different to trying to balance intermittent energy, such as wind. Because with wind, um, in the case of Genorwick, 9.1 gigawatt hours stored, but even overnight, well, in the day, where you overnight we're using 25 gigawatt hours, say in Britain, in the day 38, you know, you're not going to last long. You've got 1.7 coming out uh, maximum, but even the 9.1, you know, it's gone, it's, it's gone in 20 minutes. So you haven't got any long-term storage of any sort there, and you shouldn't think of it as a means of balancing long-term storage problems. By long-term, I mean the wind's not blowing for a day or two. I mean, we had the wind not blowing in 2018 for nine days, and the shortage there was 7,200 gigawatt hours. So and you've got 30, so you've got 9.1 in the case of Norway. There is a bigger scheme planned in Scotland, um, Corrie Glass, and that's got 30. It's about three times bigger than in Norwich, and it can only output there at 1.3. But even that, think about it. it. Even if you could get it all out, it would only last just over an hour. So in terms of storage for having a day or two or three days where it's just mild wind, 10 miles an hour or something, you get nothing out of the wind power, out of the wind generation. It can't cover that. And what instigated this small video was to try to explain to you that pump storage is not a solution for balancing uh, intermittent energy. And the reason I've had to make it is because I listened to people in the Isle of Man, for example, saying, let's put a one megawatt battery in. And by the way, that would only last them around about, I think, one and a half minutes. But they don't realise that. It doesn't do anything. And people don't actually just take the simple maths through to see what we need to balance. And so pump storage is not in any way usable as any sort of long-term backup, right? So imagine it, 30 and nine, even if we built the Scottish ones, so we'd have with Norwich a total of 39 gigawatt hours, we got nine days without wind, we need 7,200 peanuts. And that's the message I wanna get across. So. And ever you hear anyone say, oh, well, pump storage is a great thing. And it is. I totally support pump storage for the job it's got to do, which is small term, small time balancing. Perfect for that. But as regards storage to balance green energy, no. And it's so simple to understand. And this is why this very short video is out. It's to when you hear people say pump storage is a backup for intermittent. No, it can't be. Just look at the numbers. It's impossible. Thank you for watching. So what are the takeaways from this short video? One, pump storage is only for short-term grid management, not for load balancing. Two, output power rate is limited. It is throttled. Three, you lose about a quarter of the energy that you put in. Actually, that's pretty good. Four, it's long-lasting and it's reliable. Simply put, there is no possible scale of use for intermittent source load balancing.